Hello, my name's Sharon and I'm here to talk to you about Community Health Reporting 101. So let's get started. So first of all, who am I? I like to describe myself as a happy traveller. So what does that mean? Well, I'm a happy person, as you can see from the photo here, um, and I like travelling. I'm originally from the UK, but I've actually lived and worked in several countries. So uh, France, in Belgium, in the UK, uh, in, and also in New Zealand. I'm currently located in Stockholm in Sweden. So, that's, so you see that I, I enjoy travelling. In my day job, I work as a project manager, an IT project manager for a local manufacturing company here in, uh, in Stockholm. Um, a lot of my work involves working with the development teams and also the business to develop and deliver uh, solutions to so digital solutions. So that collaboration that uh, happens in open source is also active in my day job. I've been involved with open source as a contributor at the Apache Software Foundation since 2008. Um, I started uh, contributing to Apache OFBiz. I'm also now involved in a few other projects such as Pony Mail, Apache Training, Apache Kibble. And we'll talk a bit more about Apache Kibble in this presentation. But a lot of my work has been involved with community development. So focusing on the community over code and the coding uh, and non-coding contributions and all the things that help make a successful and healthy community. So uh, let's get started talking about community health. So the first question people ask is, you know, what is community health? You know, it's a, and the truth is that it can be difficult to, to describe and dis difficult to answer. If you're talking to about a person, you say to somebody, you know, you know, how do you, are you healthy? Then they generally say yes or no. And the reason they can answer is because, you know, either they have a headache or they have an ache in their body or, or something. And there's a reason why they, they know they're not healthy. If you've got a community, then going around and asking everybody uh, whether or not they're healthy may not have it can take too long and it may not have the right effect because, you know, if people say yes or no, well, that, what does that tell you? It, not, not everybody uh, has the same view of what health is. So yes is not enough. The key thing that we need to do is to understand, you know, the, the whole picture of uh, what a community is like and, and then we can see what the health means. So why do we need to know if an open source community is healthy, you know, if we're producing code, etc., is that isn't that enough? Do we have to look at the health of a community? And one of the key reasons why uh, we need to look at community health is because Apache projects, on, on a quarterly basis, so every uh, three months, need to report to the board about what's happening in their community. And the, the report needs to cover uh, a few areas. Some of the air, and, and on the right-hand side here, you can see some of the areas that, we're, that the projects are expected to report on. And they include things like any issues or if you have any security problems. Um, you also report about any additions to the PMC or also the, the committer base. We also like to look at uh, project activity. So, you know, what's been happening with your project? Are you looking at working on releases? And there, that I highlighted there, is a section on community health. So, the, you know, we need to try and understand, you know, what is happening with the community and is it healthy? So we need a good way to understand how to report community health in a good way. And why do we want to report community health? Not only because we have to report it, you projects have to report it every quarter, but one of the key things about Apache is about main, having a healthy community to create a sustainable project. So a, a healthy community will create project and code that sustains over a long period of time. 
if we look at some of the Apache projects, we have Apache projects that are you know, 18, 20 years old. Um, and that's because they had great healthy communities around them. If we want projects to endure, which we at Apache, we really, really want to, we are really focused on making sure that the communities around that support these projects stay healthy. So how can we describe health? What is community health? So this question, is community health about GitHub activity? So a lot of our projects have uh, work on GitHub or use GitHub mirrors. And GitHub has some statistics that allow you to track and measure the activity of what's happening around repositories. So you can create pull requests, you can report on pull requests and issues and conversations and things like that. So is that reporting that helping to see if the project is helping? One thing I would say is that a lot of the statistics around the GitHub repositories are related to coding. There's a strong link to coding because the repositories contain code. So a lot of the activity around that is related to the code. And a project isn't only code. There's other things around the project that are non-code related. So relying only on these statistics means you might be missing out on some other key uh, areas in your project. So also as well, when you look at the, the GitHub activity, it's a number and the numbers increase and the numbers decrease. And some projects think that, you know, hey, if the numbers are going up, then that means that it's healthy. And if the numbers are going down, then it means that the project is unhealthy. But that's not true. I mean, you can have a lot of activity and not be healthy and have low activity and still be healthy. So there needs, there's something missing here. You know, so as I say, you know, increasing statistics doesn't always mean that a project is healthy. You need to understand something around the number. A number by itself doesn't tell you very much. Let's have a look at something else. So those of you who use the reporter.apache.org tool to create your board reports. In here, uh, the, the, the actual template includes a, uh, what they call a, a chi score or a community health score. And you can see that highlighted down here. What I've done is I've extracted the community development report from uh, reporter.apache.org and shown you what the score it has given Comdev, the community development team, uh, project, out uh, from uh, health, community health. And the score it's given is 9.19 and it says healthy in brackets. So is, does that mean that the community is healthy? Well, the score itself was created to sort of try and give an indication of some other areas. So pre previously in the GitHub, we talked about activities around repositories. This score was created to do something a little different. And the score ranges from minus 10 to plus 10 to sort of give it a, an indication of, of this. Now this score, this, this 9.19 score that we have for, for Comdev, which is great, um, comes from a few different areas. And I've highlighted some of the areas down below in, on the screen here. So, you know, it's related to the number of emails that uh, Comdev gets on their email list, uh, their mailing lists. Um, it also uses releases. So has the project generated a, re a release recently? And Comdev doesn't really um, generate or do releases. So that's why it says no release data available. Uh, um, so we get a negative thing from there. But um, most projects do. Um, also as well, it, it looks at whether or not people have been added to the PMC or added to the com committer base, because part of um, the, the community is recognizing um, uh, contributions from people and rewarding merit. So make having new committers, having new PMC members. So this number is trying to capture a few things uh, the, the mailing list activity, so the discussions, the sort of coding piece with the releases, and also as well, the way that the community is being built and rewarding merit. So it's trying to cover a few things in a number. 
But if you just see a number without the context of what it's trying to, to tell or describe to you, then it's meaningless. So we need to make sure that you, as well as the number, you give the context or describe the context of what that number means. And that gives a better picture of community health. So let me talk to you about Apache Kibble. So I mentioned before that I'm a VP of Apache Kibble. I'm involved in, in Kibble uh, as, a, as a, an Apache project. So because it's an Apache project, it's an Apache top level project. It's been there for I think three or four years now. Um, and what, what does it do? So it collects data it aggregates the data, so it totals it up and chops and chops and, uh, and, and visualizes this data in around project activity in different ways. And this, the way that it's doing this, it gives you a different view of what's happening in your project. So one thing I'd like to highlight, and you maybe see this in the demo as well, um, is that it's not perfect. It's an Apache project, so it means that it's still under development, and we we're still, we are looking to build a community and we're looking for any contributors. So if, if you're inspired or wanna be involved with anything that, that you see from when I do the demo, then please come along to our mailing list and join in and help us make the, the tool a lot better. So as I say, it's, it's not perfect, it's being developed, but it's a start. And one of the things that it does have is a lot of metrics that can help give this alternative view of what's happening in a project. So what I'll do now is give you a little bit of a demo about uh, Apache Kibble, so you can take a look and understand a little bit about what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. So let's go and look at Kibble. So hold on a moment as I just share that other screen. Here we go. So if you go to kibble.apache.org, you will see this screen. So this is the main project page and it gives you some information about what Kibble is, who are the people in there, and how you can subscribe to the mailing list. But the main thing that we need to know, I'd like to show you is uh, across the top, you can see a live demo. So I just need to move my screen a little bit to just be able to see that. Here we go, live demo, I'll just move that back up again. Right, okay, there. So here, this in the live demo, you can actually sign in to the demo version. So sign in, and here you can enter guest.kibble.dev. So anyone, anyone can go to this page and log in. So guest.kibble.dev, and the password is kibble demo. And then you can sign in. Okay, just like I have done here. Okay, across the top, you'll see some uh, menu options. So organization, data points, engagement, contributors, relation, export. And down the side, you can also see some menu options. So organization, view, sources, and users. And you'll find as you click through the different, uh, the different areas, that the actual side uh, menu will change. So let's start with organization here. So one of the things about this demo that we have with Kibble is that it, we have loaded every data for every single Apache project. That includes the incubating ones. So your data is here. If, you, if you're a new project to Apache and your data is not here, then please come to our mailing list and we will, try, we will load you in. So um, this uh, all data from all Apache projects is here. And you can see here that there's like 55 million objects collected and 4, 000, over 4,000 sources. So what I'm going to show you uh, really is uh, a, a couple of options from down here. So across all of Kibble, I'm not going to show you everything because I think that may be a bit too much, but I'm going to just show you some of the basics that I think will be good to get started with. And if you have any questions, then you can come to the Kibble mailing list and ask questions and, and uh, somebody from the community will respond to you. So here, so sources, let's click on here. And across the top here, you will see the different types of sources. And this is where we can set up a source to pull in data into Kibble. 
and most of our projects have so our GitHub, Jira, uh, and the Pony Mail, or or whatever, and we'll set up a source to read those details. So on a daily basis, the there's a, a scanner that will go through and load, read the data, and load all this information from your GitHub repos, repos from your Jira, from the the uh, Pony Mail mailing list, everything. You can see that we have a, a, a limited number of sources. People have mentioned, you know, hey, there's a lot of stuff happening with Slack now, and a lot of projects have Slack channels. So Slack could be another source that we could add here uh, to pull in information around the conversations that are happening on the Slack channel. And then we can actually sort of use and visualize those as well. So another potential future, future feature for, for, uh, um, for Kibble. So that, those are the sources. The views, next I'm gonna have a look at the views. So views, this is where you can group together uh, a collection of sources. So if you're a project and you only want to look at the, the details for your project, then you can uh, create a view to just pull the, the sources in. So let's have a go at just creating a, a, a view and I'll just show you how simple it is. And you can create one for your project. So here, create a new view. So there's a filter select field here. So for example, if I wanted to just find all the, the details or the sources related to uh, Apache Skywalking, let's try that. Okay, so here we have all the sources that we have loaded for Apache Skywalking. So that includes uh, so some of their, uh, their Git repositories and, and their mailing lists. So easily we just call the view Skywalking, save the view. And now, once it's been saved, we can use it as we go through the different screens. So here we will see, uh, where's our Skywalking? Here it is down at the bottom here. So 21 sources, here it is. And, you, and at any time you can go in, edit the view and take out or add new sources. So if you think that there's something that shouldn't be included in there, you can remove it, but okay. So, um, Right, let's get started and do and show you a little bit more about what uh, Kibble can show you. So well, I'm going to move across the top now. So here we have data points. So let me just click on here. Right, and by default, Kibble will show you everything that's happening in Apache. So this is all a consolidated view of all the projects, so everything, everything, which is why we have all of these big figures. But um, it probably doesn't make too much sense looking at uh, the, the foundation as a whole, or it does sometimes, but, but usually people come here to look at their project. So what I'm going to do is use a project view as an example to show you what's available. So you can, want, if you create your own view, then you can do this what, um, the same as, as, as I do with uh, the project I'm going to use. So here I'm going to use, uh, I'm gonna select a view from here, I'm not gonna use Skywalking. Um, I'm gonna use Apache Tomcat, because I know Apache Tomcat is one that's got a lot of data and it's been around for a while and, and, and whatever. So here, so I'm using a view to look at Apache Tomcat. And remember I said that down the side, we, this, this side mem, uh, menu changes when you click something at the top here. So this, now I've got data points, we have code repositories and things down here. So this default is the code repositories. And across here, you can see a bit of a summary of what's happened in the last six months. And the, the default for, uh, for, for the period for the statistics is six months, but you can change it if you want to. If you want to do quarterly or a month or 30 days or today, yesterday, anything, you can change this and it will adapt. But the default is six months. So in six months, in the last six months, this is, this is a summary of some of the details that have happened with Attack Apache Tomcat. So uh, this bit, the, the activity has been down, the authors have been down, the commits have, been, have, have gone up, and the number of lines changed since the, since the last six months. So over the last year, you could say. In this box here, we can have a look and see what's happening or when the activity is happening. Is it happening in office, office hours perhaps, or is it happening at the weekend? So if it's happening during the Monday to Friday, then maybe it's people that are working 
uh, or doing uh, work for their normal day job. If it's happening either late in the evening or at the weekend, then it's more, could be people that are more voluntary that are doing it in the spare time. It's not 100% like this, but it can give you an indication of when uh, a lot of the activity is happening in the project. Another thing that's really interesting on this here uh, screen is around the top five contributors. And remember, we're focusing on the code repository now. So here we can we can have a look at the, the top five people that are doing a lot of the work. <laughs> you see, so here, and I know that uh, Mark uh, Mark Thomas is really really active on on uh, Tomcat. So he's he's the person that's been doing a lot of work here. So you can see how much work he's done in the last six months. So. He's done uh, this number of commits, he's done this, which has inserted this many lines and deleted so many. Then following him is Remy and Mikhail and Christopher, etc. Um, we do have a little filter to take off some of the GitHub, GitHub uh, messages as well. So you can actually just have it just linked to people rather than some of these automated messages. But I'll, for now, I'll leave it because it, it's, it's, it's not doing anything. We can also see the breakdown of the length of the code. So how many blanks, how many, how much is this comments, how much is, is, um, is code. Um, we can have a look at the commit history of what's been happening, you know, between over the six months, remember the six month period that we talked about, you know, why was there a big high here, you know, and, and it could be that you're preparing for release. And that's the reason why things were getting re really, really big. Um, we can have a look at the committers, how much commits have been happening, how many different people have been contributing. We can look at the number of lines that have been changed, look at the, uh, the evolution of the code over time. So you can see, you know, all of a sudden, you know, from this is from 2000, 2001, there's a big bump happening here. And then now, you know, this is the breakdown of the code. Um, we can also as well look at the repos, uh, the top repos, because Tomcat has multiple repos, so you can look at which is the ones that has the most code and, and things like that. This box here around Pony Factor, um, I'll touch on it briefly because it's more of a more complex. Um, is Pony Factor is related to understanding if the community is focused around, you know, one, two, three, four people. So effectively, the the number of people have made a lot of contributions to the code base. So what would happen if these people were no longer active in the community? Would there be a problem? So the pony factor really is giving you a little bit of guidance to say, you know, hey, maybe we need to try and pull in a lot more people or try and share the load, share the workload a bit more in, in the project. So in this case, I know it's showing number one, but because over the last six months, I think Mark has done an amazing amount of work on the project. So this is why it's probably highlighting the fact that, that Mark is the key person that's put out a lot of um, code in the repository over this time period. So let's go and have a look at something else. So let's have a look at we, this. So this default was the code repository. So this is about the code. So now let's have a look at the issue tracker. So here we have a similar view again, but now we're looking at the issue tracker. So once again, we get some trends about what's happened with the issue. So, you know, not so many issues open and the number of people opening issues and some how many uh, issues were closed and how many people were closing the issues. So, and it gives you a trend from the, say the six months and the previous six months. So if it's going up or down. We can also um, have a look at uh, the top issue opener. So, and the top issue closer. So these are people that are opening issues and also people that are working on or closing issues. So the interesting thing here is that these people that are opening or closing the issues may not be the same people that are working on the code, that are generating code contributions. So here you might have a, an opportunity to capture some of the people that are helping test your project, text test the code. So they won't, you won't see them uh, committing code changes, but you will see them coming back with comments or tests and, 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 and um, comments and, and, and feedback around uh, some changes that have happened. So this is something interesting to do as well, because you can see whether or not that, you know, you've got somebody that's high on your, helping you out with your issues, but isn't uh, shown on your code contributions. So just a, a way of being under, to be able to identify people that are contributing and gaining merit. Here, 
if we go down to the next one here on mailing lists, you can see also as well a similar screen where we have the analysis of the mailing lists now. So we can see how many people are, 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 are contributing, how many mails have been sent, what topics have been discussed, and, and also as well, a list of the most active authors. And similarly, similar to the, um, the, the issue tracker, you can see whether or not the people that are active on the mailing list are not the same people that are active either in issues or in the code. Imagine if you've got people that are working on or working on say event organization where they wouldn't be, you wouldn't see them on in the issue tracker or you wouldn't see them in the code, but you would see them on the mailing list actively uh, organizing and arranging and discussing things as well. Also as well, you can have people that are responding to new contributors, answering questions, helping people out but once again, are not contributing code, but they're contributing knowledge. So here you can try and identify, you can help you to identify the people that are not coding, but still helping your community. Here on the, on, in this little box here around email topics and authors, you can have a look and see over the last six months, the, 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 the amount of uh, discussion that has happened. So you can see that right at the beginning of the year, there were lots of uh, there was a lot of emails, lots of discussion. So into the new year, um, then there was a little drop, then there's another little bump, and now it's quiet. So perhaps that round about this sort of time, there was a maybe discussion or a lot of work happening around uh, a new release, per se. Um, and now, and in May, June, July, it's more of a holiday time and people are away on holiday, so they won't, they're not there to do the work. So this is, an this is an example of when, if the, st the numbers are low, it doesn't necessarily mean that the community is unhealthy. It means that, you know, the community is a holiday. Um, and so people uh, are not there to be able to do the work, but, the, you know, there's, it's still ticking over. So this is what I mean about having context to the number. If you only look at the number and say the number's low, we're unhealthy, it doesn't mean anything. But if you look at it and say, well, actually, you know, we were really, really busy earlier in the year and now it's holiday season or now we're having a bit of a, a rest or a lull or we're doing some strategy or thinking about how we can plan the project in the future, that's why the number has gone down. So you're adding some reason as to why things are happening the way they are. Then I'm going to move on to the next tab here. So then I'm going to look at engagement. So engagement is also uh, an, another interesting um, area, another interesting option in, in Kibble. Um, this is the pony factors. And I mentioned that I think pony factor is probably a bit too complex to talk about at this stage, because I think we just want to keep things basic. So I won't go into the pony factor detail here. But what I will do is go to the second one, which is contributor retention. So I think this is a really interesting one that projects will, will be, would be interested in. And here, uh, this is showing you around the, the code base, around email and around your issue tracker, the people that are coming into your community, staying or coming into your community and leaving. And so you can have a look and see, you know, people that have uh, left and come back, people who decide to just go, people who are staying, who people who are active. So you can actually see these, this information over time. So you can see it on your code base to see how you are today and if, if you're improving or, uh, or not improving, if you're pulling people in. Um, you can have a look at the email as well, your mailing list to see what's happening there. You know, are people active? Are, is, are there people joining it? Are people leaving? What's happening? And also on the issue tracker, if people are uh, being feel uh, empowered to you know create issues, help solve issues, etc. So this is, gives you a bit of context and, and and also some information about how the community is and whether or not you know maybe even how welcoming it is if people are coming and not leaving. Um, if you look at the pie charts, I think these pie charts are very very interesting for for projects. It shows the breakdown in the, each of these areas of how long people have been active in the project. So here you can see that, say for example, out of the project community at the moment, approximately 37% of the people 
have been active for less than a year within this project. There have been 32% approximately that have been active in the project for, three, for one to two years. And 11%, two to five years, and more than 5%, about 18%. And so this is interesting because it's showing you that there's people that are moving from being newcomers to being more experienced members. And you want to make sure that you have people in each of these areas because it shows a progression. If you're missing newcomers, then in a few years, you're only going to have, you're, you're going to have older people or people that are very, very experienced in the project, but you're not having any new contributors coming in. And for sustainability, that's going to be a problem for the project because no one lives forever and you can't maintain the project forever. You need new people coming in to take on the role to help um, make the projects uh, continue. And you can have, so this was the example from the uh, coding experience, and you could also have the same sort of um, uh, about information available for the mailing list as well. So you can see, you know, are there people coming into the mailing list? Are they staying? Are they remaining on the mailing list and helping the community grow? And uh, the issue as well. One of the things you might notice here is that, you know, the less than one year in the issue tracker is really, really high. And if you think about it, this makes sense because you have people that are users, say, on a project and they come to the project to report a bug. And once that bug is fixed, they go because they're all, they're only, they only came along because they had a bug. Um, so you tend to have a big um, uh, you have a big number of people creating issues. And once their issue is fixed, they will leave. So this is, to me, it, it seems like a, a normal behavior. I mean, ideally, projects would like to try and keep these people, keep these users that are uh, reporting issues. And that's just something as around a strategy that projects can use to do. Another thing that's really quite interesting uh, on this on the screen, so that was contributor retention. So now I'm going to click on uh, community growth. So here, and once again, remember, we're still using Tomcat here because we're in the view. Um, and what this can help you with is understand the new contributors. And for the, this, this six, period, six months, you know, here, I remember once again, it's the six months, um, there hasn't been any new code contributors. So it's been the, the regular people, so probably Mark and, 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 and other people um, uh, contributing code. But if they were somebody new, then it would highlight it here. And also as well, the date of which they, when they made that commit. Instead, we, we, we have new contributors on the issue tracker. So here, once again, you can see uh, the breakdown of the, the, the regular people, the norm people that have been active on that issue list before, but then we have the new people. And then we have a list of some of the new people and when they made created the issue. So if you want to actively track the new contributors and ac actively recognize the new contributors, you could use this to you know, thank them and say, right, okay, yeah, we've got, X amount of uh, new contributors this week or this month or whatever. Hey, thank you to all these people that have reported bugs and, 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 and things like that. So this is a way for you to be able to recognize some of the people that are coming into the community. So keeping watch on the new contributors. So finally, on, the, on this, uh, this, this area, there's uh, communication moods where we have got done some mood analysis. So what we've done here is pull in the uh, text from the mailing list discussions and then run a, a mood algorithm across that, the, the words and, and the conversations and come up with this mood analysis. And we, what we've done is, uh, you know, you can see whether or not, you know, there's positive uh, mood or a negative mood or, or whatever. So this is, and you, you can follow the mood of the mailing list over time. Now, I know that with, the, with, with Tomcat, Tomcat, actually, we had a, a, a bug reported where they ha actually had a discussion in their mailing list where they had some code and the code had something like not in there and because it had the word not in the code they, they were coming up with a, a negative uh, mood on their on their moodle analysis so i know that there's still some work doing on that so this is one of the reasons why uh, you know we, we we are looking for contributions to help with uh, with with us develop to develop this one of the things you can do with the mood analysis as well so with uh, apache tomcat you can see that they're you know pretty happy pretty help you know happy pretty positive but you can also uh, compare it against 
the rest of the Apache um, projects. Because remember, we have all the Apache projects loaded here. So we can actually compare Tomcat with everybody else. And you do that by doing this. So you can have a look at the mood gauge and see whether or not, you know, they, they are uh, average of, uh, the, um, of, of Apache. And they're about, about average, they're, you know, average mood. So, so that's something that's, that's interesting. So remember that the mood analysis, I don't think uh, works for all the projects. So if you, have, if you are looking to, uh, to, to use that, then please let me know if, if there's any problems. So back up to the top here, now we're gonna go and have a look at contributors. So here, once again, looking at uh, Apache Tomcat, it, during the period that we, the, pe the time period that we've selected, the six months, it gives you a list of all the people that have made contributions to the project across the code, across the issue tracker, across the mailing list, et cetera. So you can actually identify the people that are uh, contributing to the project. And once again, I'm probably going to uh, let me run through here because there's one thing I want to show you quickly and it will probably be good to, to catch Mark here, actually. So here, let me click Mark. One of the things that you can do with the contributors as well is look and find out when they have their first commit and their authorship and when they first sent their first email. Um, and also as well, do a summary of, you know, what they're doing, the commits, what repositories they, they're, they're involved in. Um, and you can also have a look at the, you know, their email, how, how many emails they sent and when. And also as well here, this email mapping, who they're actually talking to, because you may have hubs of people where a lot of people uh, refer to for information. And once again, this is a way of being able to maybe capture some of the people that are responding um, to questions and, 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 and using their knowledge to help in the community, but are not coding. So this is a way to really help try and identify these non-coding people. So that was the, the, the list and the things that I wanted to show you in this, in the, this demo of Apache Kibble and, um, and, and to show you some of the, the areas that you could use to help uh, understand a bit more about what's happening in your community. So let's get back to the presentation. Right. So based on the demonstration now, so let's see, what health signs can we see in the project? You know, how do we use uh, the, 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 what we know about the community to, to tell us how healthy they are? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can see things that add context to the numbers. Like I mentioned about, you know, are we cutting release? Uh, are, is it holiday season? Is it uh, you know, are, are, are people taking a break? Are we doing some st strategy? Is there an event? You know, these help us understand what the numbers mean. You know, are we attracting new contributors? You can have a look at. Are we are contributors staying or leaving? Uh, have our have our mailing list uh, statistics or uh, interactions gone down because people are leaving? Have they gone up because we're working on a bug fixing? Are we attracting any uh, non-coding contributors? So this is a way to be able to uh, give you uh, some tools to try and identify this non-coding, these non-coding people. Yeah. And also as well, are you just having general discussions on the mailing list, coding and fixing the issues? So these are some of the signs of the questions that can you know, give you the signs of whether or not the community is healthy. So in summary, you know, community health is all about the big picture. You know, understanding the big picture, understanding what's happening specifically in your community. It's not about the numbers. It's not only about the numbers. The numbers, yeah, it's interesting, but without the context, they mean, they don't mean anything. You know, you can be healthy and have low activity you can be healthy and have high activity. You can be unhealthy and have high activity. You know, understand that you need to have the context. Why is the activity high? 
Is it high because we're arguing on the mailing list? Or is it high because we're discussing a new release? Is it low because there's nobody there and they're all on holiday? Or is it low because the community is, 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 is broken and there's nobody there? So this is the context to add to the community health. So in, in you know, finally, the, my last word I will say here is that, you know, include the numbers when you're reporting community health, include the numbers, but also describe what the numbers mean. And by describing the, what the numbers mean, means that you understand more about what's happening in your community. And you, as part of the community, should be aware of, of what's happening and, and want to understand what's happening. So yeah, I hope that this presentation has helped give you some ideas about you know, community health and what you can do. And also as well, maybe um, shown you a little bit about Kibble and hopefully got you interested in maybe uh, being part of that and seeing how we can improve and, and again, get some feedback on, on what projects think is important. So thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, then please let me know. Thank you.